First video of 2023 and I'm going to talk about cameras. Now this is the type of video that when I started this YouTube channel 18 months ago, I thought I wasn't going to make. <laughs> I kind of thought, no, it'll all be about photography and it'll be about photographs and I'll leave all the cameras and gear and all that kind of stuff to the other YouTubers on there. But over the past sort of year, I've had so many people say to me, Jeff, talk about the cameras, talk about your settings. We're fascinated by the fact that you're using cameras which are basically ancient by today's standards. Can you talk a little bit about them? So here we are. People that uh, follow this channel, if you follow this channel, you will know that we both use camera technology, which is, I think, coming on to 14 years old, is it now? Something like that. I guess rather than just going through the settings and telling you how to set it up, I just want to give you an insight and into how our minds work with regard to equipment. And I'll give you a few pointers and a few tips uh, later on in the video if you are actually interested in working with the kind of camera system that we work with. So what are we using for this year? Well, I'm using two Leica M9s and Sarah's using two Leica monochromes. Now, last year I was using a monochrome for about half the year. Sarah's been doing a lot of projects where she needs two cameras. So she's kind of commandeered my monochrome. Well, she's she's got my monochrome, okay? And in return, she was kind enough to give me my old Leica M9 back. So I've given her, her a mint condition, relatively unused monochrome, and I've got her old battered Leica M9 back. Married life for you. This is how it works when you have two photographers um, as partners and as a married couple. You know, she gets what she wants. I just, I'm just left with everything else. That's how it works. But anyway, I'm not that actually that worried because um, this year, one of the things I've really wanted to do is explore color a lot more. The M9 for me is probably the best color camera out there. All the cameras that I've, I've worked with, none of them really have the kind of look and feel that the M9 has. And for me, it's always been like a, a scanned piece of film. That's the only way I can describe the look of these images. It's the same with the monochrome. The monochrome looks like scanned black and white film. The Leica M9 looks like scanned color film. But I have to think like a film photographer when using this particular camera. It's not a camera which you can shoot 400 frames a second. There's no autofocus. You have to manually focus or use zone focusing with it. And you shoot using the rangefinder, which is the joy of these cameras anyway. The fact that you're looking through this little window here and seeing a view on the world that doesn't change regardless of whatever lens you put on the end of the camera. So for example, if I have a 28 millimeter lens on or a 50 millimeter lens on, the view through the viewfinder is exactly the same. Now, to me, that's how I like to see the world. I don't like to see the world distorted by the lens that's on the camera. I like to see what's included in a frame, sharp front to back, so I can see all the elements in the frame. And one of the other things I like about the rangefinder is there's no blackout. When you press the shutter button, nothing blacks out in the viewfinder. So you actually see the photograph at the point it was taken. This might be a romantic notion, but you kind of develop a relationship with, with this type of camera. Mine here is battle scarred. It's got brassing all over it. It's got scratches and dings and, and I've put all those on it. They're what I've done. I mean, I'm not the type of photographer that goes and takes steel wool to a black paint camera. I know there are a few that do, but I'm not one of those guys. Every single ding, scratch and so on on here, I know when I made it. I don't see any reason to change right now. If a camera does what you want it to do, I don't see the need to upgrade the camera. In fact, you're better off in my mind, you're better off spending the hours with the camera and learning the camera inside out and getting that camera to become second nature to you than you are trying to find something in another camera which you think you might need or might not need. For me, this does the job that I want it to do. And I've used it for, for everything from portraits, landscapes, street photography, the last wedding that we did last year, the whole wedding was shot front to back with four M9 cameras, two monochromes and two M9s. So let's take a look at some of the settings that we apply to these cameras. Now, myself and Sarah are completely different in the way that we shoot and our cameras are set up slightly differently as well. Now with a Leica M9, we can't really do a lot of tinkering with it. We just 
generally set the aperture, the shutter speed, and the ISO. Those are the only three things we can um, affect. It's not one of those cameras where there's loads and loads of menus and functions and things you, like you get on a modern uh, mirrorless camera. So it's a very simple camera to set up. The way that I shoot with it is to use zone focusing. This is a manual focus camera. I'll use zone focusing particularly with this lens, which is a 28 millimeter lens, which I tend to use probably more than most at the moment. And the way that I use it, I have two settings. I'll set this to 12 feet on the uh, on the lens, and that will give me everything from infinity to about six feet will be in focus at f8, okay, which is more than enough for what I do on the on the street. If I'm working really closely, like uh, you're in a, I don't know, say you're in a crowd and you want to work really closely, then all I'll do is I'll move the distance scale to six feet. Okay, and that gives me everything from about four feet to about 30 feet in focus, which again is huge amounts of depth of field. And that's one of the beauties about using a lens like this, a 28 millimeter lens like this. It gives me a lot of scope without actually having to worry about focusing. Um, all I have to do is literally bring the camera up to my eye, take the picture and my camera's gone again. There's no focusing. A lot of the time I don't have to bring it up to my eye. I know I'm so used to this lens and this camera that I can literally bring it to my chest, and take a photograph and know pretty much what I'm going to get in the frame. I've also got a um, 28 millimeter viewfinder on the top here. Sarah has exactly the same. Because we both wear glasses, it's not always easy to see the whole of the frame lines when you're actually looking through the viewfinder. So the top viewfinder, I can see all of the edges and that's a real bonus for me. And because I'm zone focusing a lot, I tend to set my shutter speed and my aperture manually and let auto ISO take care of the actual exposure. Now Sarah's slightly different. She sets the ISO for the environment that she's in and she uses the aperture priority mode on the camera. She doesn't tend to use zone focusing anywhere near as much as I do. So she will a lot of the time focus the camera. She likes to work at certain distances, but she always preset those distances on the, on the lens first. She does that with a tab on the bottom of the lens. So you have a tab on the bottom of the lens here, which you can move backwards and forwards. She knows roughly where that tab needs to be for her distances she likes to work with, which is around about 12 feet. Because it's set roughly where she wants it to be, she only has to bring it up to her eye and tweak it just a little bit and she can take a photograph almost at the same time. Okay, that's how she likes to work. Now ISO on the M9, 640 ISO is good, 1250 at a push. On the monochrome, you can easily double that and shoot to 2500 or even 5000 at a push because there's no color information, there's no color noise. Okay, so if, you, if you're looking at buying one of these cameras, you have to make sure you've had a replacement sensor in the camera. Um, if you have one of the older sensors, it's gonna corrode at some point. Um, you can Google Leica M9 sensor corrosion and you can see what all the problems were. Otherwise, you can have a fantastic sensor now and in two years time, you'll be spending a ton of money trying to get the sensor uh, replaced or repaired. The other thing you might see now and again are dead pixels. The CCD seems to be more prone to dead pixels than the CMOS sensors are. Oh, is it a problem? Me personally, it takes seconds in Photoshop to clone out any dead pixel problems. I kind of think when the camera needs to go in for a service, then I'll send it in then and have it remapped at that point. I have a dead pixel on this camera. I only ever see it when I have underexposed the negative. Generally speaking, if the um, camera has exposed the image properly and correctly, and I, well, say the camera, I've exposed the the image correctly then I don't normally see the dead pixel on this on this camera so I'm not I'm not that bothered about it I mean I've had worse when I was shooting film so it's not really an issue for me the monochrome shoots uncompressed DNG the M9 will shoot compressed and uncompressed DNG I don't understand the difference between the two in terms of the image quality there is absolutely zero difference in the image quality I've tested it to the nth degree, I cannot see a pixel difference between uncompressed and, and compressed DNG. So I always shoot compressed DNG in the M9 simply because I don't have to change cards so often and the camera will write faster. A couple of things you have to be aware of with these cameras. They are a bit tetchy when it comes to SD cards. You can't use anything bigger than 32 gigabytes. You don't really want to be using anything faster in terms of write speed than about 90 megabytes per second. They just don't seem to like the faster cards. And we've had banding issues with a couple of the monochromes when we've used uh, faster cards. Anything below 90, we've never had a banding problem with the camera. So 
that's something to consider. You can still get the cards. Sandis still make them. You can still get them on Amazon. I'll leave some links below for the cards that we actually use. Battery life isn't great on these cameras. You need quite a few batteries if you're going to spend a day shooting. We only buy Leica batteries. We don't buy third party batteries. If you buy a third party battery for your M9, you may have a real problem further down the line. I've had batteries expand and heat up and partially explode inside cameras before. Third party batteries, not, not on a Leica, but on a Lumix um, and, and reputable third party battery manufacturers. I would never risk that with a Leica. Um, you could just literally destroy your camera by putting you know crap batteries in. The one thing with the batteries that you have to understand is that they will not last more than a couple of years without actually deteriorating in performance. I look at it a bit like film. You kind of have to put a little bit of money aside to make sure that you keep the cameras running. And in the film days, it was film. In the digital days, it's batteries. We always let our batteries discharge entirely before recharging them. So if we come back from an afternoon of shooting and one of the batteries is at say 30% or 40% or whatever it is, if it's below 50%, what we do is we leave it in the camera and leave the camera switched on so that the battery completely discharges and then we'll recharge it. And then a final tip, um, a lot of Leica lenses now are coded. They have a little barcode on the bayonet. If you leave the lens selection menu to auto or to uh, none and you haven't got barcoded lenses, you may find that you get a little bit of a, a lag sometimes when you're taking a photograph. So if you are having get a little lot of latency, a little bit of sort of have to press it and then press it again for it will take, just put a manual setting into the lens detection bit. I'm pretty certain that would cure any problems that you might be having with uncoded lenses. So this is the end of the video, which I never thought that I was ever going to make for this channel. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a like and we'd love to see you subscribe to the channel. It gives us a lot of incentive to keep making videos like this one, as well as our normal POV videos, uh, Lightroom videos and street tips and all the things street photography that we, we've done with the channel so far. If you have any comments, please leave them below. Um, we'd love to hear from you. We, if you have any comments on the, the Leica system, the M9 street photography, or even if you just want to say hi, please leave a comment below. I run the channel here and it will be me that will be commenting most of the time just so that you know. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you on the next one.